place is called the Newcastle Town. Because up in Newcastle they have very strange mating habits. All the young women of Newcastle walk down the main street, which is called Hunter Street, for reasons that will become obvious later on in the song. All the young men of Newcastle drive down Hunter Street in their hot FJ Holdens with chrome-plated grease nipples and double reverse overhead twin cam door handles. Down Hunter Street, which is called Hunter Street for reasons that are becoming rapidly more and more obvious. In fact, they've put in a few pot plants lately and they call part of it the Hunter Street Mall, for reasons that will become obvious later on in the song. And all the young fellas drive down Hunter Street, sitting eight abreast in the front seat, and they lean out the window and say real cool things to the sheilers on the footpath, like, uh, Good night. Where you going? You do it? <laughs> and every now and then, of course, one of the young ladies thinks to herself, Ooh, what she thinks. Mm. Don't you ever let a chance go by, oh Lord, don't Anyway, there was this mob of blokes driving down Hunter Street in the front seat of the hot FJ with chrome-plated grease nipples and twin overhead fox tails. And the coolest of them all, who got to sit near the window, was young Norman. <laughs> they pulled up outside the Parthenon milk bar. All of you who've been to Newcastle probably all had a thick shake at the Parthenon milk bar. It's right next door to the Chop Meow Chinese restaurant. <laughs> And standing outside the Parthenon was this beautiful looking Sheila. Oh! Oh! Said young Normie, who'd come top in his class in English. Oh! He said. So he leaned out the window and, and he said, real, real suave, like he said, uh, G'day. Where you going? Do you do it? <laughs> And she smiled at him, and just as she was about to say, Ooh, jeez, this nine foot tall hell's angel came out of the Parthenon milk bar. And Normie's mate said, No! Now, Norm was no fool. He knew straight away who they were talking to. They said, Norm, Norm, it's her boyfriend, Norm. He said, Oh, is his name Norm too? And they said, No, stupid! <laughs> And the boyfriend came and looked at Norm, and Norm looked at the boyfriend, and the boyfriend said, what do you think you're doing, mate? And quick as a flash, Norm said, what do you think you're doing? The boyfriend looked at Norm and said, oh, what are you? Norm said, what are you? The bloke on the footpath said, you want to go, do you, mate, eh? Norm said, yeah, you want to go, mate. The bloke on the footpath said, yeah, I'll have a go. Norm said, do you know who you're picking? The bloke on the footpath said, no, who am I picking? Norm said, you find out, mate. <laughs> the bloke on the footpath said, come on, get out here and have a go. Norm said, no, get in here and have a go. <laughs> the bloke on the footpath said, what's wrong with out here? Norm said, what's wrong with in here? And all of a sudden there was a break in the traffic. As any young Newcastle lad knows, when you're getting monstered by a nine foot tall hell's angel and there's a break in the traffic. Don't you ever let a chance go by, oh Lord, don't you ever let a chance go by. Don't you ever let a chance go by, oh Lord, don't you ever let a chance go by. Don't you ever let a chance go by, oh Lord. got the frat all caught up. <laughs> it's all right, it's fixed up now. Oh, the other bit's dropped off. If I'm not having trouble with me frap, I'm having trouble with the other bit. It's shocking.
Anyway, young Norm, now we get on to the dirty bit because this is only going on the album for the, for the dirty people to buy. Anyway, young Norm had a stepbrother called Fred. There's another stepbrother also called Ron. Ron used to work out at uh, United Urinals. That's a, that's a real... It's a real success story in Newcastle United Urinals. The, the bloke that started the firm off, well, in 1946, he had nothing but a sheet of galvanised iron in his imagination. <laughs> and, uh, well, nowadays it's one of the biggest producers in the country. I guess you've all seen the P26. <laughs> but Ron wasn't around when the song was written, so he didn't really get into it. But there were actually two stepbrothers, neither of whom were very handsome. They were young Cinder Fred's stepbrothers. They called him Cinder Fred because he worked at the coke ovens at the BHP. He used to come home all filthy dirty. Anyhow, young Cinder Fred's two ugly stepbrothers were really down on him this night and they wouldn't let him go to the dance at the Palace. And he was dying to go to the dance at the Palace because the star of the evening was... Now, in the studio here, we're actually saying but we can't say on the record, so only the people actually at this concert tonight will know that it's really instead of This is for legal reasons, because has threatened to sue if we, if, we, if we mention her name on the record, for reasons that'll become obvious later on in the song. And... He was sitting sadly at home by the flickering light of the television set when all at once there was a blinding flash and a little voice said, Fred, it's me, your fairy modmother. And with one blow of her magic wand, Cinder Fred's fairy modmother instantly transformed him into a pumpkin. Well, now he could go to the dance at the palace, of course, because now he looked like all the other people would go to the dance at the palace. So off he went and he met and they danced together all night. It was really love at first sight, you know. He knew all about this bit. He had to get home by 12 o'clock or he'd turn him back into his own repulsive self. And he thought, oh, geez, he thought, geez. He's a very religious young fella. Oh, geez. If I don't by half past ten, I'll give the game away. And so we met at the dance at the palace and they danced together all night, you know. They did the and the and the two step. And at ten o'clock the dog watch whistle went at the BHP. Young Cinder Fred realised that he had to get off to keep the wheels of industry turning. So he ran down the steps of the palace, both of them. And as he was going, he dropped one of his size eight steel cap regulation issue BHP safety boots. And picked up the size 8 steel cap regulation issue BHP safety boot and went over to the BHP with it and walked into the blast furnace department and said, I will give myself to the man who fits this safety boot. And the whole blast furnace department lived happily <laughs> ever after. So now you know why it's not everything in life to have a hot FJ Holden with chrome-plated grease nipples and double reverse overhead twin cam foxtails. Now you know why we're referring to as instead of Now you know why it says in letters of gold four feet high on the walls of the blast furnace department of the BHP in Newcastle. Don't you ever let a chance go by, oh Lord, don't you?